Do you think there's anything that can be done about the current imbalance in the sexual marketplace? No. Like, are, are there things? No, no. that's it. No, that's, that's just no. <laughs> I'm sorry to be negative, but this is just how it is. Again, we're talking about reality as it were. And I think that this sort of phenomenon just plays itself out, right? Um, we're on a path that is, is, not, is not a recent thing, right? This has been going on since the 1960s with the invention of the birth control pill. And it's sort of, it's, it's metastasized from that and it's, it's 50, 60 years in the making. And so naturally assuming that there's a solution to this problem is incorrect. It has to play its way out. And I think th there is some positive here, uh, or at least a, some, some, a silver lining here in that if you look at um, rates of crack cocaine usage in the inner cities in the 1990s, a lot of the reason or a major reason why young children didn't do crack cocaine is because they saw the effect that it had on their parents' generation. So I think that successive generations will look at the way the current dating marketplace is structured and say to themselves, well, I don't want that sort of life. And they may just be able to learn from the, the example set by their predecessors. I think that makes sense. So do you think there's going to be a resurgence then in more traditional values? Yeah, I would think so. Because when, when a system, I don't think people are dumb per se. I think that they are underinformed or they lack knowledge on a specific thing. And if presented with a requisite amount of knowledge, they're able to make the right decision ultimately. And I don't think that's just at in the individual level. I think that is at the societal level. And if a lot of people are very much aware of how the dating marketplace is structured and the deleterious effects of it, they're more than likely to restructure the way that they go about engaging with relationships with, with the people around them. I completely agree. And that's why freedom of speech is so important too. Because if you just let people have information, like we're smart enough I'd say on average smart enough to look at the information and then come to conclusions. If you have all of the information, right. And not just a subset that pushes you in one direction. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. It, knowledge is, is incredibly important. And as you pointed out, it's, 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 it's the freedom to, to have this knowledge accessible and be able to make decisions based off of that knowledge, whether or not you make a mistake or make the right decision is irrelevant. As long as you're able to make the decision, the decision with the information available is all that matters. Yeah, I agree. Okay. What are your thoughts on OnlyFans? <laughs> I think it's a fantastic business model. I really do. Because it, it, it you know, on, on one sense, it, it does capitalize on something which is quite lucrative and that's emotional connection. A lot of young men out there are not able to get into a relationship for a variety of reasons. Maybe they play too much video games. Maybe they, they don't really work on themselves, but OnlyFans takes advantage of this particular situation and it, it allows women specifically to make quite a bit of money. But of course there are negative, negative aspects of it, right? Again, it's, it's, it, it, it does deal in, 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 you know, degeneracy in, in some ways, right? When a one is selling, that's quite selling their body, but, but engaging in behavior that is not necessarily, you know, conducive to building a healthy society, let's say. So uh, while I don't, I don't necessarily blame these women for the hustle, I, I do think that it, it does represent a, a, a wound within society that this sort of industry is, is very popular. Although, you know, prostitution is the oldest profession, as they say. And while OnlyFans is not prostitution, let's make that clear. It, it is sort of a derivative. Yeah. Do you think there's a type of woman that can do that kind of work? Like you said, it's not prostitution, but it's a derivative do that kind of work and not have negative consequences later just be like yeah it, like it was fine it didn't bug me and it was something i did when i was younger maybe and like yeah I think there I, are people I, that can handle that cert certainly or do you think it leaves a bad imprint it, period it, it does i mean i think in in one sense i don't know i can't speak on the psychological aspect of it the emotional aspect of it because i don't i don't know that literature well enough i would assume i would assume that it does but i will say that you know, the internet is forever. And if an employer is able to look up your internet history and see that you've had an OnlyFans page, maybe they'd be less inclined to give you a job. Maybe. Hmm. This is true. Yeah. Yeah. That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the internet is forever. That's terrifying. How, how would you, this is, this is fun. How would you describe what being a simp is for people who don't know what that means? Ah, okay. That's a good question. So a simp is a uh, transcendent nice guy. He is the type of guy that placates to a woman that pedestalizes her and engages in, in you know, undue praise and gives gifts 
for the sake of receiving emotional connection and sex. So there is no emotional connection. There is no genuine interest in a woman. He's simply doing it because praising her and giving her gifts because he wants something in return. So simp is, it, it, I think within modern parlance, it's, it's used to describe a male that is subservient. Wow. That might've been the best definition of a simp that I've heard. Thank you. That was, yeah. I always thought that totally makes sense too. I always thought it was kind of a man who's probably more agreeable and is, is being nice out of guilt or something, but you think it's just a direct transaction. It's yeah. do things nice to receive sex basically yes it's it's machiavellian That's yeah for sure i think it's machiavellian nature and i think the, the term actually is very related oh. to the sneaky fucker syndrome so this is used to describe yeah yeah you know fish and, and specific animals in the animal kingdom that are not able to cut it so they're not able to reproduce with with females of, of that specific species so they'll look for very sneaky ways to impregnate the, in the species so male goby fish as, as, uh, as an example uh, the ones that are smaller are not able to to reproduce, uh, to fertilize eggs. The, the larger male goby fish are able to do so. So the smaller ones will either hide or disguise themselves as females. And when the males are away, they'll sneakily fertilize the eggs. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious. How does that kind of thing even evolve? It's not like these fish can think, right? No, not like I better, better decide I'm a female now. Yes. It's Screw all, over this big guy. Yeah. You know, I think you touch on an important point here because I think it's all instinct and it, it's it, not only just mm. in among animals, so goby fish, but also uh, human beings. And there, there's a natural instinct to reproduce and you'll look for as many strategies or try as many strategies as you can and you'll find the one that works best. And maybe simping is that option that a lot of people have. I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, if, if one applies a bit of game theory, um, as I've done in a paper, you realize that it's it's not it's not conducive to um to being able to have a long term relationship. You'll probably get played. Wow. Okay. Uh, so there's a couple questions from that. Um, hmm. What do I want to start with? That's scary. So you said I did, I never I never actually thought about that kind of behavior of like a, a simp as Machiavellianist. Like you, so you suggested that there's like danger there ish. Mm -hmm. In, in a sense, I, I think that it is not born out of good intentions, that there's a level of manipulation involved, which I think is the standard definition of what it means to be Machiavellian, is to be manipulative. And so it's you're not, you're not engaging with a woman out of uh, necessarily a love for her that is, that is, you know, that is pure and that is not, that is not based on, on any sort of um, negativity. It is more so that you're engaging with her uh, in order to receive something in return, which is sex or it, maybe even emotional connection. So there's no there's no genuine genuine desire for this person beyond beyond a, a base desire to to have sex. Hmm. This is why I don't trust agreeable men. 